Christmas story, but to dive deeply into it and be a part of it. Allow yourself to imagine. Allow yourself to see one more time the magic that Christmas is, and that's all because of our Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm glad you're here. Let's join together in our call to worship. All God's people, boys and girls, women and men, come and worship. Shepherds, magi, saints, and angels, come and worship. Come and worship. All who need the Savior, all who long for comfort, come and worship. Come and worship Christ, the new born King. Let's pray together. Good and gracious God, on this holy night, you gave us your Son. The Lord of the universe, wrapped in swaddling clothes, the Savior of all, lying in the manger. On this holy night, draw us into the mystery of your love. Join our voices with the heavenly host, that we may sing your glory on high. Give us a place among the shepherds, that we may find the one for whom we have waited, Jesus Christ. Your word made flesh, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, in the splendor of eternal life. God, forever and ever. Amen. Let's stand and sing together, O come all you faithful. Tonight we celebrate the most special of all holidays, Christmas Eve. What are we celebrating? The birth of Jesus Christ. God chose God's love for all people by giving us a most wonderful Christmas present, God's own Son. The shepherds went back, praising God for what they had done to see. We can do the same all year, celebrating and showing God's love, glorifying and praising God in everything we do. The bright view that Advent reaped the glow of candles and lighting things in circles with no meaning in order. It is a symbol of God's unending love and fullness. 
Jesus Christ is the brightest re revelation of God's life. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace, full of grace and truth. Let us pray. God, you sent Jesus our Savior, and we ask that you help us to remember this life during the year until Advent comes again. Thank you for your great love for each of us. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Well, I'm standing here looking at everybody, and if we were a ship, we'd be listening to you right. <laughs> really bad right now. So, but uh, anyway, uh, Karen asked me again if I would do my Cowboy Christmas prayer, and, and I'll give you a little background on it. I do every year. Uh, when I was a kid, we had a, a Christmas album by Jimmy Dean called the Jimmy Dean Christmas Card, and one of the recitings or psalms or poems, prayers that he did on there was the Cowboy Christmas Prayer. It always meant a lot to me. Of course, I grew up on the farm, grew up on the ranch, and uh, it always meant the cowboy way of life and the values that they share always meant a lot to me. So I just listened to that album over and over and over, and uh, I finally uh, memorized this. So uh, like I said, I've known it for a long time. So this is the Cowboy Christmas Prayer by Omar Barker. You may not know me, Lord, for I ain't much seen in churches where they preach your holy word. But I guess you might have seen me out here on these lonely plains, looking after cattle and feeling thankful when it rains, admiring thy great handiwork, the miracle of grass, and aware of thy kind spirit, and the way it comes to pass that hired men on a horseback and the livestock that they tend can look up at the stars at night and know we got a friend. Now, here's old Christmas coming on, reminding us again that him who's coming brought goodwill to the hearts of men. Now, a cowboy ain't no preacher, Lord, but if you'll hear my prayer, I'll ask as good as we've got for all men everywhere. Let no hearts be bitter, Lord. Let no child be cold. Make easy beds for them that's sick and them that's weak and old. Let kindness bless the trail we ride. No matter what we're after, and sort of keep us by your side in tears as well as laughter. Now, I've seen old cows are starving, and it ain't no happy sight. So please leave no one hungry, Lord, on this thy Christmas night. No man, no child, no woman, no critter on four feet. And I aim to do the best I can to help them find a chuck me. Now I'm just a lowly capo, Lord, and I got no business praying, but still I hope to hear a word or two of what it is I'm saying. We speak of Merry Christmas, Lord, and I think that you'll agree that there can't be a Merry Christmas for a man if he ain't free. So one thing more I'll ask you, Lord, is help us what you can to save some seeds of freedom for the future sons of man. Our first scripture reading is in the book of Isaiah, verses 2 through 7. And I just lost it here. Wow. <laughs> oh, my. Okay, there we go. The people walking in dark darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as men rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood. 
will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Isaiah 11, 1 to 9. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will hear, bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of power, the spirit of knowledge and uh, the fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears. But with righteousness, he will judge the needy. With justice, he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. 
He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and the breath of his lips. He will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt and the faithfulness the sash around his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb and the leopard will lie down with the goat. The calf and the lion and the yearling together and a child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear. Their young will lie down together and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the hole of the cobra and the young child put his hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. I'll be reading Isaiah 42, 1 through 9. Here is my servant. I take good care of him. I have chosen him. I am very pleased with him. I will put my spirit on him. He will bring justice to the nations. He will not shout or cry out. He will not raise his voice in the streets. He will not break a bent twig. He will not put out a dimly burning flame. He will be faithful and make everything right. He will not grow weak or lose hope. He will not give up until he brings justice to the earth. The islands will put their hope in his teaching. God created the heavens and stretches them out. The Lord spreads out the earth with everything that grows on it. He gives breath to its people. He gives life to those who walk on it. He says to his servant, I, the Lord, have chosen you to do what is right. I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you safe. You will put into effect my covenant with the people of Israel, and you will be a light for the Gentiles. You will open eyes that can't see. You will set prisoners free. Those who sit in darkness will come out of their cells. I am the Lord. That is my name. I will not let any other God share my glory. I will not let statues of gods share my praise. What I said would happen has taken place. Now I announce new things to you. Before they even begin to happen, I announce them to you.
I will be reading from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went with her, went to her, and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be a great and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be barren is in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her.
scripture I'm reading is from uh, Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. And I'm going to read the King James Version because I'm an old traditionalist. The, <laughs> the, the key word there is old. So. And it came to pass on those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was, while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. I'll be reading from Luke, chapter 2, verses 8 through 20. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks by night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good, no good news of great joy that shall be for all people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told.
We hired Roger to do the comedic relief team. Yeah. Thank you. Is that going to work? I hope so. <clears throat> okay. The three kings. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the t time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed with all of Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all of the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them, the, where he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, but for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judea. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people, Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found from, out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they, saw, when they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, of frankincense, and of myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they return, return to their country by another route.
The Word became flesh, John 1, 1 through 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not recognize him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the light to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth.
time of our lighting of the candles. Naomi and I will come along, we will hold our candles straight, and you will tip your candles right in, into ours. It's safer to blow our candles out before we pray. What do you think? <coughs> Thank you, Naomi. Let's pray together. Loving and gracious God, you have once again shown us the wonder of our Savior. We thank you that he has come and that he loves us, that he has redeemed us, that he has saved us all through that tiny little baby. Lord, we ask that as we leave this place, you would give us the strength and the encouragement to share this wonderful story with all those around us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and sing together, Joy to the World. <laughs> 